Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord at his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once an alien yourself in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to, the, to one of the poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If, if you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, extolled by God my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. 
receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the coming wrath, the word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. I know uh, over the last number of weeks I've been uh, talking about getting ourselves ready for heaven and that heaven is a place where love, everything is ruled by love. So on one level I get to the readings today where Jesus just sort of reiterates <laughs> what we've been, we've been talking about together and says uh, the greatest commandment to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor. And uh, it dawns on me, like, we kind of need to go deep on a personal level. It's, it's one thing to say that we need to love each other. Okay, great. But we need to get to the examples, don't we? For ourselves, in order to measure and understand what divine life is like, it takes reflection. Uh, it takes sitting down and thinking through, where have I seen it done right? Where, where can I look in my personal life to know what God's love is like? If I'm, if I'm supposed to love the Lord my God with all of my heart, all of my mind, oh, excuse me, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You know, I, I think of um, people in my life, I, I know sometimes we, we hold uh, religious and priests up on pedestals, but there is something special, isn't there, about seeing somebody just setting everything aside in life for that one goal of heaven. There, there's something about Seeing someone like a Mother Teresa of Calcutta or St. Elizabeth Ann Seton from our own country here, you, you kind of go through lists of saints, Catherine of Siena, uh, Teresa of Avila, 
John of the Cross, Ignatius of Loyola, St. Dominic, St. Francis. These are all people that in the religious nature of their life, they set everything else aside to make God the singular preoccupation of their life. And it's not as if that's the only way to do it. You know, you have to, okay, or all the married people, sorry, stop being married. I mean, no, that's not it, right? The point is, is that they're wholehearted into it. And there's something inspiring about that. That God would call people to be wholehearted into that. And uh, to watch them go about their work in love. I think some of the most joyful people that I've been around have been people who serve a lot, who sacrifice a lot. Uh, I think of when I was with the missionaries of charity, so that's Mother Teresa of Calcutta's group. I had a couple different chances to go over to the house where they're working at in, in uh, Rome and in Washington, D.C., and they really do try to do the work that Mother Teresa of Calcutta did. M Mother was driving back and forth on a train, going back to the school that she was teaching at as a young sister, and as she was on the train back and forth uh, in India, even though she was from uh, Eastern Europe, I'm trying to remember where from, uh, but she, part of this religious community, she's there and she sees people being set into the streets by their family to die because the family themselves is so poor, they have nothing left. And they're hoping that someone will come by and pick them up and take that person uh, in and nurse them and take care of them. They don't have a health care system there at the time. They don't have a nursing structure where nursing homes or anything like that, like we're so used to experiencing. It was the Wild West of our history of just like, can you take care of them or can't you? And if you can't, what do you do? And so there's people lying in the street dying. And mother just felt like, I have to do something for these people. So she asked permission to leave the one convent and, and try to start a new one. And she goes out there, finds somebody who's lying in the street. She takes that extra initiative that nobody else seems to want to do to love and serve this person. She picks them up, brings them to her house, bathes them, uh, cleans them all up, and then lays them in her own bed. She's got a one-bedroom apartment. She lays them in her own bed and allows them to die in her bed, and she sleeps on the floor. And I, I know a lot of parents who talk about getting up in the middle of the night for their kids. It's been stressful all day, and we make that sacrifice to be with our sick child. We're there to uh, take care of our family members when they're sick. Most of you know uh, that my mother, as of late, has been, uh, she experienced stroke victims a, a week ago. And uh, we're, you know, about to take her to the hospital and making this decision. And I have a, a, a call from my friend uh, who was planning on calling me exactly at that time that we're leaving the restaurant and and uh, I pick up the phone and I said I, I can't answer the phone right now we're taking my I just start crying you know, two weeks ago right or a week ago I'm like where did that come from I'm always like, no cry guy but I'm, what am I trying to say and I try to say it again mom to the hospital it's just coming down my face I'm like wow <laughs> I didn't realize this, this pent-up love that I have for my mother. And, uh, and then the, the joy of uh, being able to go into the emergency room when she's there. Priest privilege. My dad's there, and then they you know, only allow one in. And they're like, do you need a priest? We happen to have one right outside. And they call me in. And it, it's a powerful moment, right? I'm totally sidetracking from what I was hoping to talk about today, but... It's worth the story. I'm there, and uh, there are eight paramedics, four from the helicopter and four from the ambulance, plus doctors and nurses all standing around, and they bring my mom out of the scan room from the, that she had had uh, for the stroke symptoms and all of that. And the doctors, real quick, and then it's like, okay, we're going to get her on the helicopter, but if you want to anoint her, you can anoint her right now. And just the privilege to be able to go up and anoint my mother and uh, say all the words that I normally do for all of you and to be able to say, Mom, I love you. And uh, 
It was like this magic moment of the paramedics looking on. They're all younger than me, all these paramedics. I just thought, you know, like, that's it, isn't it? It's this Christ reaching into a moment to show his love through us for those that we love. The sacrifices that we make, the, the, the reconciliation that we seek, the, the actions that we do quietly behind doors to serve one another around the house without being thanked, the, the patience that we show each other, it's all, it's all worth it, isn't it? It's all, it's all worth it. So we need to, uh, getting back on track here, Think of those examples in our life that you see love active and moving around and then try to copy it. Try to, try to mimic what you see, what you hear, and to live it out. This St. Paul says this right in that second reading. You know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit so that you became models for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in those places but in every place your faith in God has gone forth so that we have no need of saying anything. This is what happens, right? We, when we teach love well to our kids and to our neighbor by our lifestyle, they have something to point to in their own life. They're able to look at it and go, that's the kind of family I want. That's, that's the kind of attitude I want to bear for myself towards others. Now, maybe we've grown up in situations where uh, love has not been well modeled for us. And I remember a challenge being put to me when I was in college. If you did not get the example uh, that you should have in your childhood, choose to, be, to make the difference and be that example for those that you love. Don't, don't replicate what you didn't get. But replicate that which you know that you should have had. Forgive your family, forgive your, your, your siblings for the way that they treated you, and choose now with your life to, to break those bad examples uh, and to create new ones by the behavior that you do. And, and uh, especially if we've had uh, conditional loving in our household, do you know what I mean when I say that? Maybe that some of the kids don't fully understand uh, there's a difference between unconditional love and conditional love. Unconditional love is, I don't care if you earned it, I'm still going to love you anyway. You know? You get that, kids? You understand that? Good. Great. Thanks for nodding because I can't read your faces with your masks. Okay, good. Uh, conditional love is, well, I'll show you affection. I'll say nice things. I'll be good to you only if you do that for me first. That's a condition. It's like a contract. I'll be nice to you, but you have to be nice to me first. And we usually, when we're fighting, when we say stuff like that, well, you weren't nice to me. Well, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. And we, we don't offer God's love unconditionally. And that's what we kind of have to do, don't we? Mother Teresa tells us we have to step outside of our comfort zone to go into spaces that nobody else seems to want to go, to love in a manner that we wish that we were treated. Imagine, imagine that. Your, your family is not able to take care of you, and so their choice is to lay you in the street to die. And, and there you are, feeling abandoned and lost, and broken and unable to take care of yourself. And somebody else walks up to you, picks you up, maybe has to drag you, depending on how big you are, drag you into their house, 
and, and uh, lays you in their own bed and then sleeps on the floor next to you. A stranger. The one time mother did that for somebody, uh, uh, this story strikes me so deeply. Mother uh, said that, uh, I don't forget, somebody watched her or she tells the story of it, but uh, somebody came in, she brought him in and she was laying them down into the, the larger house now with multiple beds and everything. And this person was fighting against her. Leave me alone. My family put me out to die. I don't deserve any of this. And he just fights and fights and fights. And uh, he mother just keeps working and the sisters keep working and all of that and then uh, she's walking away and he just cries out, just starts weeping why would you do this for me I am not worth it and she looks at him and says I will not let my Jesus die in the street every person is Christ to her that's amazing Every person is Christ, even if they're rude, even if they are insulting, even if they are persecuting, doesn't matter. They deserve the kind of love that I would show Christ. So, what kind of love do I show Christ? Like when I think of how I pray, how intentional am I? Do I allow it to be kind of distracted prayer when I know that it was time set aside just, just for praying? Or is it something that I try to, maybe I need to go over the words a few times and to really let them sink in. I know uh, the liturgy of the hours that I pray um, as a priest, they, they told us sometimes you need to pray the words of the Psalms that you're praying through as if you're, you are somebody else in the world who needs to hear it at that moment, who needs to pray in that particular way. So you yourself are not imprisoned, but the, the psalmist, the one who's praying in the psalm, is someone who's in prison at this moment and needs to pray it that way. So you, as a member of the body of Christ, are praying it for them. Pray, pray with that kind of intentionality. I don't feel joyful, I feel miserable, but we get to the Gloria in the church, and I'm going to pray it as if I were joyful. I'm going to pray the, the Gloria with intentionality. When I speak the creed, I'm going to speak it as if I am renewing my personal baptismal promises, just like the person who stands up in the front in front of the whole crowd at RCIA on, on Easter Vigil, and just say it like I'm all by myself. Before the Lord, I believe in one God. Just push through it and pray it with my heart. Pray it with intentionality. Did you hear that responsorial psalm? I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I know, I know I've told you before that one of the things that I do, this is for the kids though in case they don't remember one of the things that I do when I kneel down after communion is I try to, you know, drill it in my brain. I have to, to, to every day train myself and retrain myself to not forget to intentionally say to Jesus, I love you. And to say it in, in that core place of my heart like I would when I tell my parents or when I tell uh, somebody else that I love them. I love you, Jesus. And when I have the benefit to look at a crucifix, I love you, Jesus. You know, he, he is the example, isn't he? If you love me, you will follow my commandments. I have a new commandment for you. Love one another as I have loved you. No greater love is there than to lay down one's life for one's friends. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. This is what Christ calls us to. See him as the greatest example. 
See the saints as those who modeled it for us and lived realities. See the, the saints and the holy ones around you. Follow what you know is the model of love. And when you don't see it done well, choose to love anyway. Love in the manner that Christ has loved us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Heavenly Father is here to listen to us, we now bring our intercessions and prayers before Him. It's always good. Um, we know that these are collective prayers. But uh, we can bring our own prayers and our hearts for those that we know we are praying for as well. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, that the Lord may stand by them and give them strength, so that through them his proclamation his might be completed among the nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, that they may make good decisions and wise decisions for the greater good and promote fairness, justice, and honesty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our academies and religion teachers, that they may be led by the Holy Spirit as they pass on the Catholic faith to our students. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the donors and supporters of this community, that they devote that their devotion to the Lord and to his people may continually increase. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit, that they may experience how the Lord redeems the love of his servants and save those who hope in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Is the fourth Eucharist of prayer today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. And to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent into the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered together into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all those who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, next weekend we will have confirmation on Sunday at 2 o'clock Mass in the afternoon over at St. Anne's. So please do pray for all of our confirmation students across our area Catholic community, okay? And uh, uh, also um, on Monday we will then, that whole weekend, uh, Saturday, Sunday is the celebration of All Saints Day. Normally that would be like one of those extra special uh, holidays uh, that we have to go for a holy day of obligation, but uh, this year it's right on Saturday, Sunday, so you're good to go there. And on Monday we will have the All Souls Day, prayer day for all the souls in purgatory, all those who have died from our parishes over the last year. It's also the day that we're going to be having that collection of cremated remains. Again, so if you know of anybody, please, that has cremated remains, send them my direction and we'll help to make sure they get a good and proper burial. Um, that'll be a special Mass that Monday morning at 9 a.m. So if you do have the ability to be there on Monday, uh, you're most welcome for that Mass that day. Uh, my mother, I didn't really finish the story, they did airlift her to St. Cloud. She was here for her birthday, of all things, in Wadena. She had her that stroke event, a stroke-like event on that Friday night. They flew her out and then um, they uh, elected not to do surgery right away. Uh, they, in fact, after a few different scans and everything else, they found, they, they knew that she had a tumor inside of her heart a few years ago when she was in that car accident, they found it back then with the scans that they had done, but it now had grown pretty significantly. So on Wednesday, my mother had open heart surgery and she's re slowly now recovering from that. It does not seem to be cancerous as far as we can tell, so that's good. Uh, but thank you for your prayers and support of my mom, those of you that have been praying. I know it's hard to keep communication up, so I don't know what you've heard, what you haven't. But I know we're trying to figure out now what the future will hold and what the Lord is doing there. But thank you for your prayers. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.